Welcome, AP Cal Calculus students. Thank you for trying on AP Classroom Unit 2, I'm sorry, Unit 3, Free Response Question Set A. There's only one question for this problem set. Uh, let's see, it is a graphing calculator question. You are permitted to use your calculator to do three, one of three things. To solve an equation, to find the derivative of a function at a point, or to calculate the value of a definite integral. Take your time while you have the time to read the directions and so you can see what work still needs to be shown even if you use your graphing calculator for part of a solution. And again, as you work through these problems at home, make sure you read all the directions so you're comfortable the day of the test. Alrighty, let's look at Unit 3, Free Response Question Set A. We're given this table of values. Read what you're given carefully because we usually come back and use that information. This table gives the values of a twice differentiable function f and its first derivative f prime for select values of x. And then we're given this function g of x defined by f of x squared minus x. For part a, we're asked to find g prime of 3. If we're given g of x is equal to f, of x squared minus x. Please notice that this is a composition of functions. Because I'm plugging this function x squared minus x into the function f of x. When we take the derivative of g of x for this composition of functions, remember then I need a chain rule. And we uh, remembered the chain rule this way. g prime of x will be the derivative of the composed function, f prime of x squared minus x, times the derivative of the inner function. And the derivative of that inner function is 2x minus 1. Alrighty, so there's my chain rule. That implies that g prime of 3 will equal f prime of, now I'm going to plug in 3 as my input, that is 3 squared, which is 9, minus 3, which is 6, times, I'm plugging in 3, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5, which is, now I have to go to my table of values, f prime of 6, for x equals 6, f prime is equal to 4, times 5, and we arrive at 20. Let's look at point totals for part A. Part A is a two-point two um, part of this question. And you earned one point for a correct chain rule. And you got one point for the correct answer, g prime of 3, for two points. Alrighty, let's read carefully part B of this question. It is known that g double prime of 0 is equal to negative 1, so what is the value of f double prime of 0? Okay, for part b, and let me check, part b is worth 3 points. And let's see where those 3 points came from. I need this. I need to remember from part a that f, uh, let's see, I need g double prime of 0, and I know that g prime is equal to, okay, so this is g prime from part a, and now I need a function for g double prime, g double prime of x. There are two points awarded for finding the second derivative. Please notice that in this case I need a product rule. There's my product rule, but I'll also need a chain rule. Okay, product rule and chain rule. Okay, uh, so using my product rule, which we remembered as the first, f prime of x squared minus x, times the derivative of the second, the derivative of that second part is simply 2, plus the second, which is 2x minus 1, times the derivative of the first. If I find the derivative of this first part, I need a chain rule, and it is going to conveniently be a second derivative of the composed function x squared minus x times the derivative of what's inside that inner function, which is 2x minus 1. All right, 
I might clean that up a bit. And g double prime of x is equal to, that's just 2, 2f prime of x squared minus x plus, I actually have two of these, so I might write that as 2x minus 1 squared times the second derivative of x squared minus x. But we were asked to find g, oh no, we were given that g double prime of 0 is equal to negative 1. So that implies that g double prime of 0, let me plug in 0 for x, is 2 times f prime of, plug in 0 for x, plus plug in 0 for x, that'll be negative 1 squared times f double prime of 0. And remember, this is what we're asked to find, f double prime of 0. Alrighty. Let's start to plug in. So this equals 2 times, what is f prime of 0? f prime of 0 is 2 from that given table, plus, this is just 1, of course, f double prime of 0. But we're given that g double prime of 0 is equal to negative 1, so this equals negative 1. That implies that 4 plus f double prime of 0 is equal to negative 1 and solving f double prime of 0 is equal to negative 5. Again, point totals. Point totals for this question. You were given two points to find the second derivative, and you were given one point to arrive at this correct second derivative. f double prime of 0 is equal to negative 5. Okay, carefully read part C. When I read part C, is there a value of C? For 0 less than c is less than 3, such that z, g of c is equal to 5. And justify your question. Justify your answer. I'm so sorry. This sounds like an intermediate value theorem question to me. Okay, so you got a point for this condition of the intermediate value theorem. f is given to be twice differentiable. If f is twice differentiable, it is continuous. But we're not asked about f, we're asked about g. So g is also continuous. Why is g continuous? Since it is a composition of two continuous functions. And you got a point just for stating a reason why g is continuous in this two-point part of the question of this question. Alrighty, so g is a continuous function. That's a condition of the in intermediate value theorem. Now we see that g of 0 is really just f of, plugging in 0 into that composition of functions we are given, f of 0 minus 0, which is f of 0. I go to my table of values. When x is 0, f of 0 is 4. And I can find g of 3. g of 3 is f of 9 minus 3, plugging into that composition of functions, which is the same as f of 6. Go to your table of values when x is 6, f of 6 is 7. Alrighty, uh, so I quote, by the intermediate value theorem, there exists a c value for some c greater than 0 or less than 3, such that such that g of c is equal to 5 since f of 0, which is 4, is less than 5, is less than 7, which was equal to f of 6. Okay, So there's an input between 0 and 3 such that the output will be between the outputs of f of 0 and f of 6. Actually, and I'm just noticing, we wanted to make this statement using the intermediate value function, intermediate value theorem for a function g. Maybe I should bring that g function back. 
g of 0, which is the same as f of 0, and f of 6, which is the same as g of 3. If I want to be very specific, I think I should bring back that function g of s. Alrighty, uh, carefully read part d. Okay, now we're given this new function h, where the derivative of h is 4 times e raised to the cosine of x power. At what value of x between negative 3 and 0 does the instantaneous rate of change, that's the derivative, equal the average rate of change of f between negative 3 and 0? Okay, so let's find the average rate of change. Sounds like a slope of f on the interval from negative 3 to 0. Okay, that average rate of change will be f of 0 minus f of negative 3 all over 0 minus a negative 3. What is f of 0? Using my table of values, that was 4 minus f of negative 3 was negative 5 all over 3. And that average rate of change between negative 3 and 0 for the function f is 3. So now we need h prime of x, which is equal to 4e to the cosine x, equal to 3. Okay, that looks complicated to solve, so this is why we needed our graphing calculators. So I'm going to plug into y1, 4e e to the cosine x. As soon as I see a cosine function, I want my calculator in radian mode. And y2 is equal to 3. When I sketch that graph, but remember I really just want to find the x value between negative 3 and 0. So I'm going to cut to the chase and just look kind of in that region. And my graph looks something like this. Forgive my rough sketch, but looks something like this for y1. And then y2 came through that horizontal line at y equals 3. There's my y2. And I want to find where those two intersect, but really only between negative 3 and 0. And that x value was right around there. Remember, I used that second calculate menu. And I'm going to calculate the intersection between those two terms. Okay, so practice that on your calculator if you have not. And when I calculate that intersection, I find x is approximately negative 1.863 if I round or acceptable answer is negative 1.862 if we call that a truncated answer. Either one of these is accepted. You can either round to the nearest thousand or you can just chop off anything after that third um, decimal place if you truncate your answer. Okay, maybe we should just be careful on our AP, AP exam to state this in a complete sentence, and we will say the instantaneous, let me state that, and I will clearly state my solution. The instantaneous rate of change of H equals the average rate of change of F on the interval from negative 3 to X, negative 3 to 0, at X is approximately negative 1.863. What did we get points for on this last one? Uh, we got points for this, finding that average rate of change, and then we got a point for our solution. Alrighty, thanks for tuning in and checking what you missed. Have a great day.